Santa Cherub. Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, thanks so much for joining me. My name is Beth with Carolina Princess Sweet Treats and Pretties. And today I have an estate haul sale for you. So this is the receipt and it was two pages, <laughs> but it was only my second time going to an estate sale. This one was actually in my area, which is pretty rare. Wasn't sure what to expect, but I thought, oh, I'll just run over there really quickly. I was waiting on Sunday because Sundays are supposed to be 50% off, which is the last day of the sale. I approached the location and it is packed. There are cars lined up down the street and people are walking and I'm like, oh, wow, you know, there must be a birthday party or something going on. But no, they were going to this particular house. And then as I approached the door, I was even more excited because there was a big sign on it that said 75% off today. I could not believe it. I was so excited. I had only been to one other estate sale and so I was a little nervous because I went by myself. Open the door and walk into this house and it was full of treasure. I got some pretty cool stuff, um, some nice items, and I spent about $60 on everything that I'm going to show you today, including the tax. So, Let's get into the hall. When I first walked in, the first area that I saw was the dining room. The table was set with beautiful china. They had some very nice vases. Um, all of the ones that we normally look for, there was a whole pottery piece. Um, there was a lot of McCoy in this house. Um, and it was just tons of things. It's a little unnerving still for me to walk through someone's home. And there were people, there was a ton of people. That was the first thing that I noticed was how nice everything was. And the second thing that I noticed was how many people were actually in this house. There was wall to wall people and they were just getting armloads full of clothing and books and pottery in every room, every drawer in the kitchen. They were going through this lady's restroom with the cabinets and the closets and the linens. They were shopping out of her closet. I mean, there were just people everywhere. When I started looking around, I did find this milk glass piece. Now, typically I don't pick up milk glass, but it says here that it's a milk glass pedestal candy dish with the lid. It was marked $20, so I got it at 75% off of that. The reason that I did pick this up, of course it's in pristine condition, but the reason that I picked this up is that I have a friend at work who has recently, um, had an interest in milk glass. And I'm not sure what the pattern on that is. So if you know what this pattern is that is on this piece of milk glass, please leave it in the comments below. I love to learn from my viewers. So if you know what this kind of spiky pattern is, if you will let me know in the comments. But again, I picked this up because I have a friend at work who has just started having an interest in milk glass and she wants to collect a piece. So I am gonna be saving this for her birthday. And it's a very heavy piece. A couple of other things that I found in that first dining room area was a beautiful little bone china duck. I just thought he was so sweet. Again, no chips or cracks on anything that I found. It does have a sticker on the bottom. It's a little faded. So I'm not sure I'm, that you can make it out. I would need my magnifying glass to be able to find that. But this one was marked at $6. Again, everything was 75%. I kept going and actually found these. I think they've just been picked up and put in here, but they were in her dressing room. But it's just a couple of little brown ceramic owls and it is a little pair of owls. There is no marking on there. It looks like it could have actually been a homemade piece, like a hand painted piece, but they did very well with the coloring on there. Um, and so these were $4 and then of course the percentage off. I also found in the house a little made in Japan scarecrow. And I picked this up because it's, fall and it would look great in a vignette. There was no chips or cracks or anything in it, but he has a sweet little face, a little scarecrow. 
And it's just a simple figurine, but I thought this was very fitting for the time of the year. So I did pick that okay, up. Let's see what else. I did find a pair of salt and pepper shakers. These are considered vintage and they are golden avocado salt and pepper shakers is what it's listed as, but I don't see them marked in any way. Very, very lightweight, um, very large. It is green with this beautiful little blue burn on it got a beautiful glazing on this so I'm not really sure of the maker I'll have to start doing some digging and looking into that there is a tiny chip of the green right here but it does have a plastic cork on the bottom and then it looks like the brown one is just the same um, but the blue bird stands out a little bit better in that one as well so I got these for about three or four dollars. But again, they're very large size salt and pepper shakers. In the office or the study, I found two new sets of double decks of cards. They are Stardust plastic coated cards. They are unopened and they have great patterns on this set. Again, there's the Joker. I know that Laura Bemos and Patrick with Trusty Huckster Mercantile just did a deep dive about vintage playing cards. And this one still has the original price tag on the back and it was 87 cents. I guess it was a store called Globe, but it was 87 cents for this double deck of cards in its plastic container from Stardust. And I don't know if that is a hotel or casino. So if you know anything about these playing cards, which are the Stardust plastic coated playing cards, they are new in package. They do still have the cellophane on them and they're in the little plastic box, but this is a set. It looks like a city scape or a college town, maybe a college town and a city scape. But again, here are the jokers for both of those decks. And these came together in the little red plastic case. Again, they are Stardust plastic coated playing cards, if I can get them back in. So if you know anything about these playing cards, if Stardust was a hotel or a casino, or if it's just the brand name, put it in the comments below to let me know. All right, and I think those were marked at $5. I went through the sewing room and I picked this up. I mainly got it for the box, but look at this beautiful needle threader. It is much older and it is actually in the box, but these make great little display pieces. It is simply just a little plastic piece there. And it is a needle threader. It does have the base, and I guess so that it would slide in, if I can get it to slide in. And the directions are actually in here. Oh, and it has a needle in there. So this is the little, this is the little piece that has the actual needles in there. There are still needles in there, so I need to be careful. These are the actual directions for threading and assembling the piece. So let me see if there was any kind of marking. It's a hex automatic needle threader. The automatic needle threader is necessary and helpful for all. It saves time and prevents eye strain. Makes an excellent gift or grab bag prize. Well, that's cool. Here are all the directions. And I love to find um, vintage pieces especially sewing pieces, but to have the actual directions and everything in there and some pieces, that is really cool. But I'm not really sure, I'll have to read. I see how the needle goes through there, if you can see it coming out when I press down. But it, it makes a great piece, especially for our vintage sewing notion collectors, and I know we have a lot of them out there. So again, please make sure that you put in the comments if you know anything about this vintage needle threader. I thought that was really cute and it was very inexpensive. Staying in line with the sewing notions, this was out in the back area. I got some vintage patterns. Now look at this design here and it's marked 39 cents. 
they did seal these up in a plastic bag. This was, I was trying to see what size it was. I'll have to look, but look at that fancy outfit there. So there's that pattern and there was this pattern. And you know, I really think some of these styles are coming back in. So I picked these up. This was uh, this was a little bit more expensive. It was 65 cents. And this was a size 14. I love the little matching headscarf with the dress there in the middle. So I got both of these for, they were marked $2 for all of her patterns, but they were, of course, 75% off. So in the house, in the restroom area, I found this piece and there are three, and I want to say this is cruel, but if this is not cruel, please let me know in the comments. It is some type of needlework. Now there are three owl pictures and it's on this little boho hanger. So first let me show you the little boho belt is what it looks like. It looks like there was a wooden class and it's a belt and she has created these owls or she bought the owls. There's one going down. There's two and there's three. And it looks like she hung it and put a little bell on the end. Now it could have just been a hanger, but um, it kind of resembles a belt. But I thought these were super cute. I love the needlework on them. And again, there were three of these and I think it was 75% off of $8. So I thought those were really cute. Another owl that I found was a single piece that was in the living room. And again, it is the beautiful needlework there. So if you know what type of needlework this is, please let me know in the comments. I wanted to call it cruel. It is a little bit thicker and it is a little bit raised. So it has almost a 3D effect there, but it, it just says needlepoint on there. And I don't know if needlepoint is different from cruel. I don't crochet, I don't cross stitch, I don't do needlework at, at all. I can't even sew on a button, but maybe now I could thread my needle if I needed to. But I thought the owl needlework that I got for three, and I'm gonna sell these as a lot of three. I'm not gonna separate those. And then this one would be for sale by itself. I thought those were super neat. And again, took a lot of time and work. So I did pick up all of those. I also near the kitchen found this cookbook. And I believe this cookbook may have been a dollar or two dollars, which I can't remember. And this is a junior league cookbook of Longview. It's called The Bounty of East Texas. And originally it sold for $9.95. Again, I paid one or two dollars for this. And it's a cookbook by the Junior League of Longview. Um, and so I enjoy cookbooks, especially vintage cookbooks. The copyright on this book is 1977, and it looks like there was a second printing in July of 1981. This says in the foreword, East Texas truly abounds in natural resources, beauty, and as you'll soon discover, good food. We present the bounty of East Texas in appreciation of the natural resources of our region, as well as the, for the good cooks of our area. It says Longview is nestled in the pine forest and gently rolling hills of northeastern Texas. Many of the basic ingredients for the recipes collected here are native to this region. The index of this is got appetizers, soups, salads, and dressings, meat, seafood, poultry, and game eggs and cheese, vegetables, breads and sandwiches, desserts, accompaniments, men's fare, wine and beverages, and index and charts. I think I need to look up what men's fare. Let's go to 303, shall we? Let's see what they got in here. 303 is men's fare. So in this, marinated vegetables, dilled cocktail meatballs, filet mignon with chicken livers. 
I'll pass. Thank you. There's a chili recipe, jalapeno pepper sauce. Now that doesn't sound too bad. I don't eat jalapenos, but a lot of people do. Um, but it doesn't have pictures or anything. It is just the basic recipe there. But this is a really, oh, pimento cheese. My big daddy loved pimento cheese. Oh, goodness. Oh, a chocolate angel strata. Mmm, now you're speaking my language. Fudge pie. Says right there, fudge pie. So I'm gonna take a look through it and see what kind of recipes in there. I may keep it or I may sell. Next thing that I found was a beautiful Scotch tape tin. And this one I could get open. It's pretty clean. Not a lot of scratches or anything on there. In the three-way haul that I did with Martha from Vintage Conversation and Tammy with Vintage Uprising Texas, it showed a electrical tape scotch tape tin that was plastic but this one is metal and um so i think that one is like the yellow and black uh pattern and this one is more of the christmas pattern the christmas colors and so i know that they make great displays and a lot of people do collect them i didn't get very much in this haul but i got some really quality items the next two things that i got are truly a favorite i got a creamer and it is a beautiful pattern. I, I don't know if that is a daisy pattern or a flower pattern. Again, I don't know anything about patterns. So if you do, let me know in the comments below. But um, I love cream and sugars. But the best thing about this one is that it does indeed glow. It has a beautiful glow. So this is uranium glass. And it is a single creamer, so I couldn't pass it up. I had to pick up anything that's uranium glass. It's a big favorite in our little vintage community. And I actually found one more piece. It's a piece of Fenton. Look at this beautiful bowl. It has the Fenton waved edge around it. It has the opalescent top here that, go, that fades with the white around the edge. It is just a beautifully stunning bowl. And um, this one was marked at $48. It was a higher priced item. It is, it says Fenton Opalescent Ruffled Ended Green Bowl. I was very excited to find it. It is in very good shape. It's my first real Fenton piece. I was really excited to find this and really thought that it was going to be um, uranium glass. Now I've I put the black light on here and I don't really see a glow um, in this. Now there are some specks in it that does glow, but for the most part, I don't think that it's glows. But nonetheless, I still got one piece of uranium, so I was happy with that. I just loved the bowl and I think it will be beautiful even at Christmas. I can't wait for Easter to put a little bit of grass, maybe a chick and some ceramic Easter eggs there or maybe a little bunny. I think this will be beautiful at Easter time. So I was still okay even though it didn't glow. The next couple of things, I did find these. Now, I know Christine at Side Street Market, I believe, is the one who had these. And we were going back and forth to decide if these are people or are they dogs. But they are some truly vintage pilgrim candles that, see his face? His face kind of looks like it would be a dog, especially with like the hair or the ears right here. Um, she's a little bit more human-like. They are in perfect condition. Look on the bottom. It says that they were 10 cents. And I will, of course, need my glasses to read this to see if there are any. These are made out of Buffalo, New York. So, Christine, I know why you picked them up because they're out of Buffalo, New York. But they will make a beautiful, I think I'm going to go ahead and use them, but they are going to make a beautiful part of my Thanksgiving vignette. But bonus, I got the turkey. I had not seen the turkey before, and he is in pristine condition as well. But look at Tom Turkey. So, I have Tom Turkey with the pilgrim guy let's see if i can get them all 
and the Pilgrim Girl. So I thought those would be beautiful in a little fall vignette. And I was excited to see what great condition that they were in. So that was fun. Um, I got a couple of other types of candles. I got one set of tapered candles that are called Santa Tapers. And look at this box to start with. The box is just beautiful. They were, they're called Capri Candles. They are Santa Tapers and they were 98 cents. But they have little, they look like little Santa Claus. Now, right here, it is split. I Yeah, right here on one of them is split. I do not see a split on the other one. There is a crack in it, but I mean, look how old they are. I'm surprised. These say 1967 right here on the bottom, 1967. So these are in great condition for 1967 candles. Um, and I just thought they were super cute. I don't know if I would be able to melt the center of that wax. I love their little eyelashes, if you can see those. Can you see his little eyelashes and his little eyes? Kind of giving a side eye there, Santa. But I thought they were beautiful can candles. All right. The next set of candles that I got, I don't see a date on these anywhere. This is candles for table and mantle decoration. And again, they're out of Buffalo, New York. So lots going on in the production in, in Buffalo, New York. But let me show you these beautiful candles. They're still new in package. So I wanted to show you these. They are beautiful. I just love those. There's absolutely no damage to them, and they're just fabulous. And let me take them out of that package so you can see a little bit better. Aren't they beautiful? I thought they were probably one of the favorite things that I have. So I only have a couple of more things to show you. So be thinking about what your favorite item is. And while I put these back in the bag, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for watching. Um, if you are new to my channel, I'd love to have you be part of my YouTube family. And all you have to do to do that is subscribe. Um, it is free. And if you also click that notification bell down below, it will let you know when I put out a new video, when I'm going live, or there's any other type of event. If you want to go back and watch my previous haul videos or my simple DIY videos, please check out my playlist from my channel. So let me finish up and tell you the these are probably some of my biggest finds. I was checking out, we had to check out through the garage. And when I was waiting in line, I happened to notice all the vintage holiday and Christmas and Thanksgiving stuff. And I thought, well, while I'm waiting, let me just go over and check it out. And I saw these beautiful vintage 1960s flocked snowmen ornaments. And they are actually in very, very good condition. This little snowman, he even has his little pipe. And can you see the detail on his eyes? He's got some earphones on. He's got a little pail, but he is absolutely beautiful. And I can't remember the maker for these, but I did look them up and they're, they are very vintage and um, there is a specific maker. There was one more that I found of a snowman and this one is a little happy guy that is ice skating. Again, it's the same maker. It is a flocked snowman. They are in great condition. I love the little detail in the eyes. I want to make sure that it, it is focusing for you, that you can see that. And they have their little scarf. And if you notice on the scarf, it has some great detail on that as well. And the last one, oh my gosh, he's too cute. Again, another little 1960s. Um, it's called a cherub. And y'all look at him. He's a little Santa cherub, and he has this little bell here, and he has his little wings, but the best part is, are you ready for this? I don't know if you could take the cuteness. Look at his bum. It's a baby Santa cherub bum. Who knew? 
but I thought he was too sweet. He or she, it could be a girl or a boy, but I just thought this was too, too sweet, and I love his little cherub bum there. That is cute. Now, I don't know if she added the wings or if the wings were there. It kind of looks like they were there because it looks like they're sewn in, stitched in some way there. But um, I thought these were super, super sweet. So that's all I got. But I think I got some great quality things. And I'm looking around to see what maybe my favorite thing may be. I loved the flocked ornaments. Those were probably some of my favorites. I loved all three of these. I also loved the tapered um, candles for Santa and the other little candles, along with the Thanksgiving candles. I thought those were in perfect condition. So there's just so many things that were my favorite. Um, and of course, everyone always loves the uranium glass. So in the comments below, please let me know what your favorite is. Again, I'd love to have you subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell to stay notified to see what else I'm up to. And until next time, y'all stay pretty and be sweet. Bye-bye.